Hey, so welcome back to the shocking truth about female fat loss. So look, we've had a look at what you've probably done up to now, which hasn't actually got the job done for you. And what we're going to do for, for the remainder of the presentation is actually take a look at what it is that you need to do. So, so what will actually work to make sure that you uh, get in shape? All right, so what I've got in front of well, what you've got in front of you now here is the hierarchy of fat loss. Okay, now basically what this is is it's showing the most important thing at the top, and then the the thing that gets the least kind of results at the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> now what we'll do we'll just kind of um, just kind of run through these dead quick, and, and then we're going to take a take a bit more of a look into to one or two of them. Okay, so you'll see top of the list is mindset. Now, it is so, so important to make sure that you're, you're, you know, you've got your head in the game, basically, in order to make sure that you're, that, that you're going to actually get the job done and, and get yourself in the best shape possible. If, you, if your head's not there, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, then, then really, you know, you, you're definitely not going to get the, the, the result. That, that you're looking for no matter what you try, okay? You really do need to make sure that your mindset is in, in the right place. <clears throat> You'll see that number two is actually see above. So mindset, it really is that important. Okay, so the next one is hormonal balance. Now, your hormones are pretty much what determine, the, the, the things that determine you know, how much fat you're going to store and, and where you're actually going to store it. And we're actually going to have a bit of a, a bit of a look into those th sorts of things in a little bit as well. All right, the next thing is correct nutrition. You'll see that's actually above any of the actual exercise things. You see, we've got to have your mindset, your hormonal balance, and your and your nutrition all sorted out. If those things aren't in, in the right place, aren't sorted out, then you know the, 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 no matter what training that, that you're going to do, you're not going to get the result. Someone could give you the best training program in the world, but if your if your mindset's not there, and if you're you're not having a you know, nutritional strategy which is actually going to help rebalance your hormones and, and um, actually allow you to get in shape, the you know the best training program in the world isn't actually going to help you too much. <clears throat> okay, so look, the next thing we have got is metabolic resistance training. This is the this is the, the you know the top of the list when it comes to training. It's doing loads and loads. Well, not loads and loads, but the the right amount of the right types of exercise here. Okay, so we're looking at strength based training here. Now, obviously you. A female, so you're most probably not actually looking to get stacked and piled on a load of muscle. And one of the misconceptions around doing anything like other than going and standing on a cross trainer, and and you know actually doing, in fact actually doing some weights or something like that, is one of the mis these misconceptions is that a lot of women actually think that if they went and did like a strength based session or some body weight work, some push ups, they, a lot of them actually think, and maybe you think that you're actually going to pile on a load of muscle and and end up looking butch. Believe me, that's not going to happen. You don't have the the hormonal makeup, or you know, the, the vast majority of women don't have the the hormonal makeup to actually allow you to to put on a significant amount of size. But what you do want to do within this metabolic resistance strain is actually is actually create a little bit of lean tissue, so create a little bit of muscle, which is actually going to make sure that your metabolic rate, so basically the 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 amount of calories which you're going to burn while at rest, is actually elevated. So you're actually going to burn a whole pile of extra calories for free just just because you've actually um, you know added a, a bit of lean tissue. Okay, the next thing we got down there is intense anaerobic interval training. So there you're looking at sprint training. So that's the first, I, I suppose, sort of more cardio-based thing that you're looking at. There is uh, interval training using kind of more sort of sprint-based stuff. Okay, so short, sharp bursts with you know a reasonable amount of rest in between. The next one we've got intense aerobic interval training. So you know even if you've done it before, if you've gone out and you've done an interval session when you're out running, you might have gone hard for 30 seconds and easy for 90 and, and repeated that a few times. That's what we're looking at here. The next one down is steady state high intensity aerobic. So maybe going out and banging half an hour as fast as you can. That would be in, in that bracket there. And then right down the bottom there is a steady pate low intensity aerobic exercise. Okay, so that might be just going out and plodding along for half an hour. So in a nutshell, that is the hierarchy of fat loss. Going from the top, what is the most important, and down to the bottom, what is the thing that is not, not going to get you the best results. Okay, so I want to look a little bit into the mindset here. Now, this is what you've got up on the screen there are things that a lot of my clients and fitness campers, and to be honest, myself, um, 
actually kind of hear these sorts of things from from, from people, you know. Um, and and you, if you've ever been on like a plan and, and you've found that you've absolutely been able to smash it, you've probably had this sort of thing from people as well. You know, the the people that come up to you and you know they're they're out of shape and they they say they want to do something, but all they really say is, "I wish I had your motivation." You know, I just don't have your willpower. I can't seem to get motivated. I start start off okay, but I lose interest and give up. Or I'm not that type of person. I don't know what that type of person is, but but um, whoever's saying that apparently isn't that. Um, and this is the one that really gets to me. It, it's easier for you. A lot, you know, I've heard that myself, and a lot of my clients have said fitness campers get that. It's easier for you to get in shape. You don't understand. You know, stuff like that. Okay, um, and. What I've got to tell you is it's not actually all about motivation. In fact, that's actually quite a small part about it, to be fair. Motivation, you see, actually comes from more from external sources. So motivating is if you come along and you know, you've, you're listening and watching this, this little presentation here, this seminar, and you know chances are you're getting a bit motivated to go out there and, and do something about actually being able to get in better shape. But you know, if you just got the motivation there and you know I've motivated you, that's great. But what will probably happen is you're going to leave leave here and you know switch your computer off, feeling pretty motivated for change. But soon after, you know whether that's three, four, five, six days, a couple of weeks, it's probably going to end up that nothing has changed. And the reason, despite your good intentions, is that you're actually not been completely in. You might not have been completely inspired. Now it's really, really important that if you're going to to get in shape, that you actually get inspired. It's all about the the inspiration. Okay, so what's coming from within? What is it that's internally driving you to want to get in shape? Okay, and it's really, really important that you do find that out because otherwise, no amount of motivation is going to help you. Okay, so look, I'm going to look at something now that I call the, the the why factor. Okay, now that is it's pretty much the most important thing I think when it comes to the mindset is actually knowing why you want it. You know, why is it that you want to drop that dress size? Why is it that you want to you know run a marathon? Why is it that you want to you know I don't know get a, get a better job? Why is it that you want to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve? Without that why factor, the chances of you actually achieving it. Are, are significantly reduced. If you're just kind of saying, I want to be a clothes size smaller, then that's great. You, you might want that, but why do you want it? Without actually kind of pinpointing why you want it, it's, you know, chance, as I said, chance are it's probably not actually going to happen. So look, these um, these six steps to success, two six steps to success here are, are, are pretty important, and I'm actually going to want you to to kind of do this now. I want you to think about what it is you want now, whether that is to you know drop a stone in weight or you know five inches off your waist, or whether you just want to feel better. Okay, whatever it is, I want you to kind of think about that right now. What is it that you want? Okay, now you know what it is that you want. I want you to think about why you want it, okay? If you want to be, you know, a, a stone lighter or, you know, a, a few inches smaller, why is that? Is it just because you, you fancy it or is there a deeper feeling? Is it because you want to get in shape because you're you're going on holiday and you don't want this holiday to be yet another one when you're, you know, not scared, but, you know, a bit nervous and you, you really don't want to kind of show your body off in a bikini or a swimsuit by the pool? You know, you, you're going to be the girl there with, you know, walking around the pool with a with a towel potter, you know, uh, wrapped, a, wrapped, wrapped pretty much right around your body. Is that is that why you want it? Is that why you want to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve? You know, do you, do you want to do it because at the minute you feel so low and so bad and, and, and you just can't stand looking in the mirror and you've just decided that you've had enough and, you know, that is it. You actually want to get in shape because you just want to feel better. You want to get your confidence up there. It's so important to know why it is you want it. So really do think about that right now. Why is it you want what you want? Okay, next thing is to actually know when you want it by, okay? There's no good saying, Andy, I want to be a close size smaller. You know, that, that's all very very well and good, but when do you want to do it by? Write it down now. Honestly, write it down. When is it that you actually want to be uh, looking and feeling how you want to be looking and feeling? Okay, so make sure you write that down now. Okay, next thing there is knowing the price. Now I'm not talking about the price in terms of in in terms of sterling. Okay, we're not talking about money here. You know that might come into it, but the price could be 
it, the could, the price could be that you need to 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 get up at six thirty in the morning to go and go and train uh, for half an hour. It might be that you need to be a bit more organised and, and actually plan your meals out at the start of the week. Or it might be that you need to actually, you know, get all your meals cooked for the next day, the night before, so that you know exactly what you're going to have the next day, so that you can stay on top of your, your nutritional plan, whatever it is that you're doing. Okay, it's all about knowing that price. Whether that price is, you know, paying 80 quid to, to go along to a, a, a fitness camp or, you know, paying 50, 60 quid an hour for to see a personal trainer, whatever the price is, you need to know what it is, you know, work it out and then you need to pay it okay in a nutshell there's no good knowing a price if you're not actually you know going to be able to pay it so again are you going to be willing to to get yourself up at 6 six thirty to go and train are you going to be willing to to get your meals prepared so you can stay on track with your nutrition are you going to be willing to to not go out and get hammered with your friends as soon as saturday night comes around whatever the price is pay it if it is a financial thing and you've got to pay like i don't know 80 quid or whatever how how much something's going to cost you then you know it might well be that right now you've got something in your life which is costing you 100 quid a month which which you can get rid of whether that's you know pop into Starbucks a couple of times a week or a few times a week and you know paying you know four or five quid there um, or whether that's you know eating out every now and again in, in restaurants that, that you know you shouldn't really be eating out at and and um, you know hit, hitting maybe the wine or something like that whatever the price is make sure you know it make sure you pay it so look I want you to actually make sure you've done those six things before you move on to the next slide Okay, so look, we're going to actually go through nutrition now, and I'm going to keep this mega, mega simple because I want to get onto the really meaty stuff. All right. Okay, so super simple nutrition. Okay, if you want to be, you know, if you want to get the, 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 you know, pretty much the best possible health gains, you want to get rid of these things. Okay, so anything that's going to be toxic or cause a possible intolerance within your body or inflame you from the inside out. Okay, so we're looking at things like wheat, gluten, and yeast, uh, dairy, processed foods, anything with added sugar in it, the booze, of course, and that morning caffeine fix as well. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's the stuff you generally kind of want to get rid of. The stuff that you want to eat, okay, is things like meat, fish, poultry, fruit and veggies, all the fresh stuff, okay? The fresher, the better. If you can go organic, go organic. If you can't, as I said, just the fresher, the better. Now, if you can't or can't or won't or whatever can uh, cut out all of those things we've just spoken about, then so long as your diet is consisting of about 80% of the things on your screen right now, then you're going to find that you're going to have, you know, phenomenal benefits to your body, you know, whereas... At the minute, it might be that it's kind of 50-50, if that. Okay. One of the most important things also when it comes to nutrition is actually staying hydrated. Now, if basically in a nutshell, if you're dehydrated, if your body's not getting enough water, it's not going to let you... Uh, let you drop fat okay you want to be drinking around about a liter per 50 pounds of body weight per day so if you weigh like uh, 150 pounds then you want to be drinking about three liters a day if that sounds a lot it, it it probably is compared to what you're drinking right now now one of the best things to do is as soon as you get up in the morning neck a pint with your breakfast okay get a pint down with pretty much every time you, you have a meal and then you know sip from a decent sized bottle throughout the day as well if you find you need to to, to go to the toilet and wee quite a lot then if you pin, uh, stick just a tiny pinch of of sea salt in the in each bottle you won't taste it but you'll find that that'll actually help with that and it'll also kind of aid the the whole detox process as well all right, so we're going to come on and look at spot reduction now, okay? Now, you've probably heard about this. You've probably even tried it yourself. You know, when you go into the gym, you think, right, I want a flat tummy. I'm going to go and do 100 sit-ups, okay? Um, and, and you, you know, you do crunch after crunch after crunch. But you've most probably found that your abs still haven't come out. And there is a reason for that, because that type of spot reduction isn't going to work. But, however... We can actually do things with your nutrition to actually target specific areas of your body to make sure that they start giving up fat and allow you to, to nail the fat from those areas and get a lot more confidence and just basically feel a whole lot better about yourself at the same time.
So look, in the next few slides, I'm going to show you how to blast your belly back into hiding. Okay, I'm going to show you how to how to get rid of that that belly fat which you hate. We're going to see how you can actually get rid of your fat bum and legs. Okay, if that's somewhere where where you store fat which you just can't stand. I'm also going to show you how we can nuke fat from your love handles as well. That's actually, believe it or not, the easiest one of the three to get nailed. So look, it's all about hormones. Where you store your fat in your body is all about the hormones, okay? And I'm actually going to tell you a little bit about those as we go through the next few slides as well. So look, when we're looking at these these uh, these three places, we're actually really in a kind of if we really simplify, we're looking at the, the the big three here. Okay, we're looking at cortisol, which is a stress hormone. That's the one which we're going to look at when it comes to belly fat. Estrogen, your female sex hormone. Okay, that's actually uh, a lot of the time the one which is responsible for fat storage within your bum and your legs. And then we're going to look at insulin. Okay, this is as I said, this is the easiest one to sort out, and this is the one that's actually responsible largely for those love handles which you just hate sticking out of your jeans. <laughs> All right, now when it comes to comes to your hormones, balance is key. And that's a whole internal thing. Now we're actually going to be well, I'm going to be kind of telling you how to kind of balance your hormones a little bit by actually sort of getting your nutrition back on track. Okay, first off, but also your your your, your training strategy is going to help with that as well. And there are certain types of training, such as the steady state um, cardio, which are actually a lot of the time going to have a negative impact on, in particular, your stress hormone cortisol levels, interestingly enough. So as I said, balance is really key. And if you've actually got just one hormone, which is a little bit out of whack, then a whole whole kind of chain of events is going to kick off there as well, which is going to cause a, a, you know, a, a bunch of different uh, sort of effects within your body. Now, if you've got high cortisol, so for instance, if you, you know, you're really stressed a lot of the time, what you're generally find is that your testosterone in is, is actually and testosterone and, and growth hormone levels are actually going to decrease if they're lower your estrogen levels are going to be higher and you'll learn about that in a minute and, and what that actually can mean for your, your legs and the bum if your estrogen levels are too high your thyroid's going to be affected if your thyroid's affected your insulin your blood sugar levels are going to be all over the place and if that's happening then you're going to that's basically going to go back to the start and cause even more stress on the body and boost up those cortisol levels all right, so look, we're going to look at belly fat next, and this is just one example of a client of mine who was training with me individually, okay? I think in there, I think that's about 12, 12 weeks or so into her training, so she's made a made a hell of a difference there, really, really smashed it, okay? And before she basically started off and, and, and kind of um, started off on the nutritional side of things, her diet wasn't too great. And what was happening is it's actually kind of stressed out her body quite a lot. And there's quite a lot of cortisol floating around there, which as you can see on the left hand side there, the, the, the belly's pretty big. And now we've kind of sorted that out on the right hand side. She's made a massive, massive impact within her body there in particular around the belly. So look, belly fat, as I said, it's kind of, a lot of it is down to cortisol. Now, that is a stress hormone, which is produced in your adrenal glands on, on top of your kidneys, okay? It's uh, responsible for, like, energy regulation and metabolism. And actually, under stressful con uh, conditions, it actually provides your body with energy from protein. Now, um... It kind of actually, as well, sort of, it, it can kind of move fat from storage depots to fat cell deposits in your abdomen, okay, uh, within, uh, in particular, you've got a, a tissue there called your greater omentum um, within your kind of abdomen area, and that's actually very receptive to, to cortisol, which isn't a great thing, as you can imagine. Okay, now when it comes to stress, what is it? Well, it's pretty much what you feel when life's demands exceed your ability to cope with them. It can be psychological, physical, or social. You know the type. If you, you know, for, for instance, your, your psychological might be if you're um, you're having a particular you know, tough time at work or a, or family or marriage problems or something like. That. You're going to be psychologically pretty stressed out. The physical kind of stress. So you know that can actually be exercise. Okay, you might be doing too much exercise and causing too much stress on your body okay and then we got the social stress there as well so you know sort of uh, you know that 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 might be uh, interactions with uh, with colleagues or, or friends or or you know angry drivers or, or whatever else out there as well okay so what happens when you get stressed well 
your body actually initiates a stress response. So when you're in a stressful situation, whether that's um, doing, you know, working out or whether that's getting angry at the car in front for slamming the brakes on, your body actually releases cortisol, which kind of gets your, gets your body fired up, ready to either stay and fight or to leg it and run. Okay, now what happens there is your body actually releases energy from fat, okay? Um, it breaks down muscle for energy and also uses sugar sugar stores to, to fuel this fight or flight thing, okay? So in a nutshell, again, cortisol is released, your body gets fired up, and now because it's fired up, your body's actually going to get some energy out there in the mix ready to either fight or run. So that's in very basic what's going to be happening there. Okay, you're then actually going to perform the job, Okay. So you you know if if you um if if you're doing a workout then you're going to do a workout if you're um about to fight the taxi driver in in front of you just slammed his brakes on then then you 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 get your fight out of the way whatever happens okay afterwards cortisol actually um is going to encourage the immediate refueling of the fuel supplies after this stressful event okay now you've used the fat and sugar from from those stores or you you, you hope you have from the stressful event so you actually need refueling to be ready for the next time now this need for refueling is going to manifest itself as an increased appetite for for for, for um, and craving sorry for sh generally kind of sugary and salty foods now, oh, sorry, before I go on to that one, if, for instance, all, all that stuff there is good, so, so cortisol is not the devil by any means, and, and, and you know, as, as I said, it's actually there gearing you up, ready for to, to deal with a stressful situation, but where the big problem arises is if you're permanently getting stressed out and you, you, you're always under stress, then cortisol is out there getting all this stuff done and, and getting pretty much getting you ready for, for a stressful situation when there's not actually going to be something to, to, to kind of um you know you use the energy for okay so if you look at that kind of um sort of sort of really kind of simply you, you your body your body basically deals with stress the same whether that's physical psychological or or a social stress so whatever the stress is is, is um whichever stress kind of comes out you know if, if you your body's going to deal with it in the same way in, in in essence so if your if your boss stresses you out at work your body's going to initiate the same sort of response as it is if you're going to you know get in a get in a boxing ring and, and actually use the energy difference is if you're getting in a stressful situation at work you're not actually going to burn that energy off if you're getting getting sort of fired up and ready to go and have a boxing match your body is going to burn the burn the energy off so look how do we actually lose belly fat well it's it's it, it's some pretty simple things we can do here so you've got actually the basic removal of toxic foods and allergens okay so we basically want to stop stressing out your body your liver in particular here okay at the minute if you if your diet's crap and you're eating loads of processed foods and high sugar foods foods that are basically going to cause a big stress response within your body then we need to remove those foods and load up on all the fresh stuff okay so we need to get that liver working properly we want to improve your sleep as well. I'm going to speak about that shortly. Okay. Sleep is so, so important for stress management and management of those cortisol levels. If, you, if your cortisol levels are good and they're in check, they'll actually be nice and high in the morning when you wake up and you'll actually wake up and kind of bounce out of bed as opposed to wake up and feeling completely zonked and just hitting the snooze button. We want to stay away from the steady state cardio. So if you're someone who's under stress all the time, whether that's because you're nutrition or you're at your work or whatever, then we don't... We we want to stay away from the steady state cardio, which is actually something which can actually promote a you know, pretty big cortisol response there. You want to be doing shorter workouts, so up to about 45 minutes. After that time, your body pretty much starts to eat into its muscle tissue. Now, muscle is the only tissue in the body to burn fat, so obviously you want a decent amount of muscle in order to make sure your metabolic rate is high. If you lose muscle, then you're going to be burning less fat, okay? So you're actually going to be burning less calories throughout the day. Okay, as well in as well as all that stuff there, we want to actually take stress away before you add it. So if you're a super, super stressed person, you've got a really high stress job, maybe you get up at five o'clock, get to work for six o'clock, don't get home till seven o'clock in the evening, and then you're, you're having a, a, a crap time with you in your relationship or something, you've got kids getting chucked out of school or whatever, and just your whole life is just full of stress, then to be honest, 
you add in add in something like exercise may not be the best thing okay it might just be another additional stress it might end up that way okay you know the biggest thing there would be to just make sure that we get that nutrition now so we can start attacking that before we actually add so so we can basically take stress away before we start adding it you'd want to be doing metabolic resistance training up to three or four times a week ideally for about 45 minutes or so okay um Metabolic resistance training, so things that's actually going to actually boost your metabolism for up to about 24 to 48 hours after you finish training. So we're looking there at big compound exercise, like things that will involve sort of squats and, and push-ups and, and pull-ups and all, all sorts of things like that. All right. You also want to take a bit of time to relax and de-stress every day. Even just taking like 10 minutes of alone time and just sitting down and chilling out on your own, just focusing on nice, deep, steady breathing is something that's actually really, really uh, effective to help you de-stress. Okay, cool. What else can we do? So we want to make sure we're getting a balanced blend of vitamins and minerals, okay? So, you know, making sure you're getting your fruits and your veggies down, okay? Vitamin C is great. So eating things like green veggies, oranges, kiwis, the B-complex vitamins are going to help there as well. Magnesium, which is needed for energy metabolism. Uh, coenzyme as well can help for sort of nerve and muscle function. All right, with... Uh, with um, Magnesium, we want to take about 400 milligrams a day. Calcium as well, which um, if you've got low calcium intake can actually lead to elevated cortisol production in your fat cells. You want to take between 1,000 and 1,500 milligrams of that a day, and that should help as well. Okay, in addition to that as well, there's something called Tulsi tea, which is a great uh, kind of herbal tea. It's actually an adaptogen, and... You want to be taking drinking this about sort of after two o'clock when you kind of want to start really winding down and decreasing those those cortisol levels. Okay, so Tulsi tea is great because what it's going to do is actually help to help your body to actually reduce the cortisol levels, so the stress hormone levels. So something like that is great to drink. Okay, cool. Looking at uh, something like Korean ginseng is is also a good one. Ashwagandha as well and, and rhodiola. There are a couple more uh, adaptogens which can also help there as well. So look, this is just an example of, of one lady, and this was just 19 days this transformation took. And what we've done there is, you know, pretty much everything, everything, everything I've said there, minus a couple, a couple of sort of supplements in there. Um, we've actually just completely detoxed her body. We, we've, uh, we, you know, that probably sounds a bit faddy or whatever, but we've basically taken all the crap out and just filled her up with loads of fresh and natural food. And that transformation there took 19 days. And again, the training we did there was obviously, you know, all the metabolic resistance stuff. And that was about sort of 30 minutes, about five times a week. Okay, now when it comes to sleep, this is so, so important for your fat loss, okay? If your sleep's crap, your fat loss efforts aren't really going to be great. Now, one way that can actually help to improve your sleep if your sleep currently sucks is actually it's kind of develop a new routine before you go to bed. So about 90 minutes, maybe as early as 60 minutes before you go to bed, if you take a cold bath for about 10 minutes, it doesn't have to be ice by any means, just literally pour, pour, pour a cold bath with a cold tap, hop in there for 10 minutes, then you'll take your magnesium and, and some zinc as well go to bed sort of an hour hour and a half later and good night you should find that you sleep like an absolute baby if you think that sounds a bit weird try it out for a few nights let me know how you get on i'm sure that'll make a massive impact on your body Okay, so losing your legs and butt then. We're going to actually look here at estrogen. Now, this is a hormone which is largely responsible for you guys storing fat within your legs and bum. Now, estrogen, it's the female sex hormone. It's actually the, from the Greek word meaning mad with desire. So read what you like into that one. It actually helps regulate your basic female biological functions. And pretty much it turns you from a girl into a woman. Okay, it's responsible for the female body shape as well there. Okay, so, you know, as obviously as you develop and the weight actually goes from you know to your to your lower body and your chest a lot of the time. Well, yeah, with women, um, and it's also they're responsible for for bone health as well. Now you've got actually three types of estrogen. You've got estradiol, which is produced uh, by the ovaries and. It's the predominant estrogen in young women, okay, um, and this actually promotes uh, fat storage around the hips and the ass. Now, when you hit menopause, your estradiol levels actually decrease, uh, decrease, decrease, and estrone, which is another one which we'll chat about in a minute, actually kind of takes over, and you find that you end up actually shifting uh, fat over to your belly. So you might find that once you're sort of through or going through, and once you're through menopause, that you actually end up with uh, sort of uh, stop storing some much fat on your legs and bum, and it actually starts. Start storing it around your belly instead. 
Okay, another one is Estro, and this one's actually produced by fat and actually promotes uh, fat storage around your belly and the organs. So that's when we just mentioned there about, you know, when you go through the menopause and, and we're kind of uh, got a little bit more of that uh, coming out there as well. And then you've got Estro, which is produced by placenta during pregnancy and actually made from other types of estrogen. Okay, we're not going to worry too much about that at the moment. All right, there's also these things, um, environmental or xenoestrogens. Now, these things, these are the little things which we hate, okay? And these are, these are devilish little things. They're actually chemical compounds, which are kind of a similar structure to the, the actual sex hormone estrogen. Now, what they do is they actually mimic estrogen and interfere with your hormonal balance, which we don't want. These things can actually turn on your estrogen receptors, okay? Now, you can, these things are actually prevalent in things like plastics and chemicals and additives, detergents linings of cans, tooth fillings, non-organic foods, and the pill. Now, interestingly enough, the, the pill has actually um, sort of recently been, been linked and partially blamed for uh, the rise in man boobs. Um, because if you think you've got to, you know, loads of women um, you know, taking the pill and their, their estrogen levels rising or whatever, and they're kind of contributing, shall we say, to the, the, um, the water system. Now, obviously, the guys are drinking this and... The, the the estrogens within there are actually you know in a nutshell kind of leading the the the, the dudes to turn into girls <laughs> um, so they're actually kind of uh, causing guys to actually store a little bit more fat around their chest interestingly enough cool now your body doesn't want these excess estrogens that should say estrogens uh, floating around it um if everything's working right, then your liver will actually deal with these things from sending out these, these producing these sex hormone binding globulins, okay, which it, it kind of actually sends out to clean up these uh, the estrogens, the xenoestrogens. But now get this, if it's overworked, okay, if, you, if your liver's overworked because you've got too much sort of chemicals and processed food and all that going into you, then it's actually going to either not produce enough of these sex hormone binding globulins or it's actually going to produce deficient ones so things that aren't actually going to get the job done now it actually is going to still need to send these excess estrogens somewhere and your lower your lower body as we said is very very receptive to these now it's got these things called these things called alpha 2 receptors um which actually kind of block your body from using fat as energy. Now, if you can't use fat as energy, in particular therefore you know from, from your lower body which we're talking about now, then obviously you're not going to burn it off. Now, when you burn body fat, you actually stimulate fat to be released from the cell. It then gets sent, um, sent sort of um, in, into the bloodstream to be used as energy. But the alpha-2 receptors actually block this, which means then you're not actually going to burn the fat from your legs and your bum. Now, so this is the real important stuff. This is the golden nuggets here. So how to nuke the fat off your legs and your bum. First off, again, we want to detoxify. We want to get that liver back on track so that those sex hormone binding globulins and, and other things can actually get to work and clean up all these xenoestrogens and actually deal with them if they do actually start getting back into your body there. We want to have a pile of green veggies. Well, you want to really get these down sort of every day, at least a portion or two, you know. Um, you can kind of supplement that with a, like a greens drink as well um, to, to help that as well. Um, they're also, as much as anything else, going to actually help to... Make your body more alkaline now the more alkaline your body is the easier it is to actually burn fat and to be healthy you actually want to be um you know sort of hitting the the cruciferous and, and the green veggies to get this um sort of chemical called indole 3 carbonyl and this is really kind of prevalent in things like watercress spinach and broccoli now what this does it actually binds to estrogen and and helps to kind of excrete the man-made estrogens as well as metabolizing the natural estrogens from the fat store so in a nutshell get some greens down yeah Okay, cool. In addition to that, we're looking at things like getting the citrus fruits down. Fish oil is going to help. Nuts and seeds, which uh, are actually uh, can can sort of help with uh, the production of pro progesterone, which is pretty much kind of like the opposite to to estrogen. Uh, and turmeric and, and and ginger also a couple of other things that can help there as well. Okay, in addition to that, green tea is actually is actually good and actually can kind of help to detox estrogen. Um, it's got something in there which actually basically helps helps to kind of um, 
bypass the the alpha two receptors, um, which in a, in a nutshell is going to enable you to to burn more fat from your legs and your ass. Okay, resistance training again is going to be key. So the metabolic resistance training, the things that's going to get your metabolism booming, so you're actually going to be burning a pile a uh, pile more um, more calories as you uh, you know j- just even while you're resting. Now, interestingly, for you guys who are looking to nuke fat from your legs and bum, a little bit of steady state cardio after the metabolic resistance training can also help. Now, um, the, the whole deal with that is that, um, sorry, get back onto that slide. The whole deal with that is what, what sometimes after you've um, sort of done the, done the resistance training, sometimes the, um, the, the, the fat's actually a bit kind of uh, sort of re- resistant to actually get burned. So what we can actually do is, is use the, the, the metabolic resistance training to kind of get the fat out of the cells. And then we use the, the kind of steady state, slow kind of cardio to actually sort of oxygenate the blood and, and actually burn off the fat within there as well. You, so we can actually use that as energy there. <clears throat> okay, cool. So you can have a look at the, the, the image here. Again, this was another 19 day transformation. You can see what a massive impact she the, the, the lady here has had. And she's 51, by the way. The lady has had on uh, on her, um, no, nu- nuking the fat from her, in particular, her bum, which you can see there. You'll also see that her, her, her tummy shrunk quite a bit as well and that the waist looking pretty cool. Okay, cool. So, how to nuke your leg and butt fat? So, in, you know the the in, intense metabolic resistance training, which we've already talked about. Um, now, I've, I've kind of just gone gone through this little bit just now, which was the uh, the whole doing the bit of cardio after it. So, we will just run through it again, mega quick. Basically, the the, the training that you do, the resistance training, is actually going to stimulate the fat out of the cells and into the bloodstream. Um, sometimes, as I said, the fat in the lower body is kind of likes to hold on to fat if you're kind of an estrogen type and you, and you typically store a lot of fat down there. Um, and, and what happens is the fat doesn't always actually get to where it needs to go. So what we do with that resistance training, again, we stimulate the fat to get released using that type of training. Then, as I said, by using the, the cardio-based stuff, we actually oxygenate the blood and, and send the fats out there to be used. So that's why you can do may- maybe a 20, 25-minute walk or a light jog after that, um, after that resistance training. Simples. All right, love handles. Now, as I said, this is the simplest one. It's the quickest one to go through. So your love handles are largely to do with your blood sugar levels and the hormone insulin. Now, insulin is actually a hormone which is to it serves to control your blood sugar levels. Okay, now your blood sugar levels are elevated by carbs, uh, specifically uh, grains and high starch fruits, and obviously things like your you know your, your sports drinks, your, your your high sugar foods as well. Okay, when your, your your blood sugar level rises too high, too fast, your pancreas actually secretes insulin into the bloodstream. So your blood sugar levels get elevated, and then your body chucks out some insulin in an attempt to to reduce your blood sugar levels. Okay, now one thing insulin does it actually helps turn glucose into fatty acids and store them in the fat cells. Um, and you know that's that's one of the ways it will actually bring your your blood sugar levels down there. Now, in particular, it's particularly receptive in and around the love handles. Now, so what happens is basically, um, you know, h- high levels of blood sugar, as I think we've, we've mentioned, actually trigger this insulin release. Uh, low levels of, of insulin actually, sorry, low levels of blood sugar actually suppress it, okay? So we're not going to have a pile of insulin floating around your body if your blood sugar levels are stable. Now, if, you're, if your blood sugar levels are stable and we've not got loads of this hormone insulin floating around your body, then we're actually going to better allow your body to tap into its fat stores. Now, uh, exercise actually uh, helps make sure that mu- makes your muscle cells actually more sensitive sensitive to insulin and actually more efficient at using glucose at, as fuel. So, you know, the, the, the resistance training that, that I'm kind of be recommending as, as I've already gone through a couple of times is actually going to help you to uh, be, be better at using sugars for fuel in a nutshell. Okay, now too much insulin is actually going to reduce your end up. Um, yeah, sorry. To when your when your blood sugar levels rise, you, you're um, as I said, we, we send out insulin, but what happens is your body actually generally sends out too much, okay, which actually ends up reducing your blood sugar, level, sugar levels too much. Now, when your sh- blood sugar levels drop too much, you then get hungry, get cravings, and then, you, you know, those cravings are never for, for broccoli and sprouts, okay? You're always going to end up want to eat more carbs, you know, and, and all of the naughty, sweet, salty stuff as well. 
<clears throat> now, but here's the thing, right? When your muscles are actually still filled up from that last feed, which probably wasn't too long ago, you've actually got no room left to, to kind of store those glucose. So what insulin does, it actually unlocks the, the fat cells and allows the sugar in, okay, to again, to, to bring the blood sugar levels down. And as we've already said, when your insulin levels are high, you're not going to burn fat. This was just one example. This girl was actually on, on the fitness camp uh, here down here in Weymouth, and she absolutely nailed it. So this was about 28 days, I think this was. Yeah, In fact, yeah, it was 28 days. And you can see the massive difference we've made to, to this young lady's love handles. And in particular, this girl is actually an insulin-dependent diabetic as well, which makes this transformation even better. And actually, her blood sugar levels were absolutely, you know, you know sort, of, sort, of, sort of 10 times better than they were when she started the program as well. We actually made massive, massive impact to her health as, as uh, you know, on, on, the, on that program there. So look, how to lose the love handles. So we want to go, you guys are looking to lose the love handles, actually want to go lower carb. You want to focus on your carbohydrate timing as well, okay? So making sure you're eating the right kind of carbs at the right sorts of times. So that, you know, one of the things we're talking about here is not eating sort of sugary, starchy carbohydrates willy-nilly kind of throughout the day. Um, and if you're going to be eating something a bit more sugary or a bit more kind of starchy, you really want to get that down just in and around training time. So either a little bit before, training or kind of within about half an hour after training now if you're going to be eating after training sort of in that sort of 30 minute window basically your, your body's actually it's kind of got that window where it's actually going to be able to utilize the sugars a little bit better okay so it's not actually going to have a mega impact on your blood sugar and subsequent insulin levels okay so if you want any of the sweet stuff or the starchy stuff i'll pretty much just get that down straight after training again when it comes to training we want to look at the resistance training side of things as well so the metabolic resistance training so you know, the, the, using all the muscles, you've got about 600 or so skeletal muscles in the body. If you can work every single one of those within a workout, then you're going to have a big metabolic effect. Drop a whole ton of fat as you as you kind of progress through your program. Carb cycling as well is, is something which we can kind of look at to to make sure we're going to control the, um, the, the blood sugar levels there as well. Getting healthy fats and proteins down as well. These things are actually going to promote a much smaller insulin response than um, than the, 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 than carbohydrates. Okay, so fats and proteins aren't going to promote a big insulin response there. Okay, um, I mean you know different types of nuts, for instance, might 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 um, you know promote a slightly bigger one than one type of nut. For instance, uh, an almond is less sugary than a cashew nut. So you know something you might want to do is if you're thinking about having nuts, would be to have something like almonds as opposed to like yeah, as I said like, uh, like like cashews or something like that what else can we do we want to get a high quality omega-3 supplement down that's actually going to help reduce insulin uh, reduce your, your insulin levels there now you want to ideally go for a, a liquid kind of pharmaceutical grade fish oil okay um, if you really can't stomach the liquid then you need to really you know get a pretty decent high quality um, capsule I get mine from uh, what is it uh, I think it's Aliment uh, alimentnutrition.co.ukr.com something like that uh, that's that's pretty pretty decent quality there um the, the cheap crappy stuff that you get in the supermarket generally isn't any good a lot of the time you, you really don't know how long it's kind of been sat there and you know quite often that the actual oil is actually can can be rancid and aren't really going to do any good fenugreek is, is something which actually um can help with uh, keeping kind of healthy sugar uh, uh, glucose levels and, and sugar metabolism magnesium is responsible in, and, and sort of involved Involved in the production, transportation, and, and function of, of insulin, um, similar to what we spoke about earlier on with a couple of the other things, uh, about four or five hundred milligrams of magnesium a day will do the job. Ashwagandha, which is an adaptogen, which will actually help to um, normalise your your, bl your blood sugar levels as well. So look, that is it for the the seminar. I'm, I'm hoping that you've uh, actually got a got a fair amount out of it. I'm not going to run through the next few slides because that's just kind of talking about the, um, the, the 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 fitness camp here. If you do want some information on a solution that you can um, that that you can kind of go with, if if you want to actually kind of attack all these areas, then if you look at WeymouthFitnessCamp.co.uk, you can you can actually sign yourself up for a free for a free trial on there. But look, I'm going to leave you to it for now. I've taken up far too much 
such your time as it is. But I really do hope that this has been of interest for you and has, um, has you know, kind of helped you out. If you do, if you want to get in contact with me because you've got any questions, then by all means, you can send an email to Andy at WeymouthFitnessCamp.co.uk. I literally would be more than happy to help you. Alternatively, you can find me on Facebook. Just search Andy Sloan, and I'll more than happy friend you and again answer anything you want to know. So look, have an amazing day, whatever you're up to, and I shall speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.